Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about the spotted lanternfly, and we'd like to thank Leah Stein for liking and sharing the podcast. And we'd also like to thank everyone who downloaded our 17th ebook on Amazon. It's called Home Improvement Solutions What Every Homeowner Should Know, Book 17. And if you've downloaded a copy, we would really appreciate a rating and review on Amazon. There are some records of insects that fed on plants with a description similar to the spotted lanternfly that dates back to around 200 AD in China. Some of the first scientific written descriptions of the spotted lanternfly was in 1845, calling it a plant hopper native to Asia. Hmm. What is a spotted lanternfly? The University of Massachusetts says the spotted lanternfly is a type of insect called a plant hopper. They feed on the sap of plants with their piercing mouth parts. The adult is about an inch to an inch and a half long and about a half inch wide. They have six legs and two pairs of wings. The outer or forewings are grayish or beige in color with black spots. The hind or inner wings are red, white, and gray with black spots but you only see the hind wings when they spread their wings open. Hmm. What are their life stages? In fall, female adults usually deposit eggs on a tree, but they also lay their eggs on other surfaces and vehicles, which can help them spread. Hmm. The adult will lay 30 to 50 eggs in rows and cover them with a white or pink secretion that slowly turns gray, tan, or brown as it dries, and it blends in with the coloration of tree bark. That group of eggs is called an egg mass, and they can lay up to two egg masses, which are about an inch long. When the nymphs hatch in spring, they start out black with white spots, and they don't have wings, and they're only about a quarter of an inch long. They molt their exoskeleton two times, staying black with white spots. When they molt for the last time, they turn red with white spots and black markings, Hmm. which is interesting. And then they'll be about three quarters of an inch long. The nymphs will jump to avoid danger. As an adult, they develop two pairs of wings and can fly, but most still prefer to hop and jump. And they'll show off their red hind wings when they're scared. Okay. The adults die in fall or winter, and their lifespan is usually only one to two years. And you should check out some pictures online because they're pretty interesting looking. Okay. Where do they live? The National Park Service says the spotted lanternfly is native to China, India, Vietnam, Japan, and Taiwan. The U.S. Department of Agriculture says the spotted lanternflies were first detected in Pennsylvania in 2014 Mm. and are currently found in at least 14 states, including Connecticut, Delaware, Indiana, Maryland, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Virginia, and West Virginia. You'll find them at night grouped together on tree trunks, branches, fences, and walls. But they don't glow like a firefly. Then why are they called lanternflies? (laughs) Really? So their name comes from historical accounts of the lantern-shaped markings when their wings are extended. Hmm. What do they eat? They feed on the sap from a wide range of trees, including apple, maple, oak, pine, walnut, and hardwood trees. They say susceptible trees, like the tree of heaven, walnut, and willow, can develop weeping wounds, damaging the tree. Hmm. They also like other plants and crops, like grapes, peaches, plums, hops, cherries, nectarines, and figs, which can be damaged by the insects. Oh. So now I'm getting why people are concerned about them. What damage do they do? With crop plants, as they use their mouth parts to feed on the tissue that moves nutrients through the plant, it reduces the plant's nutrients. Hmm. And the areas where the spotted lanternflies feed can become an opening for bacteria, fungi, and other pests to enter the plant, causing damage and infection. Yeah, not good. Because the spotted lanternflies consume large quantities of sap, 
they excrete large quantities of honeydew. The accumulation of the honeydew can promote the growth of a black fungus that can cover plant surfaces and weaken the plant. Gross. Yeah, it's wild what goes on in nature. Yeah. What do you mean by honeydew? I'm not going to want to know, am I? (laughs) It's the undigested, sugary liquid waste that's expelled by sap-sucking insects. Gross. (laughs) Okay, back to the damage that lanternflies do. So the combination of the loss of sap, wounds to the plant, and infection can disrupt the plant's development, fruit production, and health. The Ohio Department of Agriculture says the insects are a major concern for the grape and wine industries in Ohio. Kent State University says Ohio ranks sixth in the nation for wine production. Really? I don't think I would have guessed that about Ohio. Yeah, me either. What other problems do they cause? Penn State University says Pennsylvania nursery operators, fruit growers, and Christmas tree growers have lost $22 statewide from damaged crops and job losses. Wow. And they say the losses could grow to $300 million in Pennsylvania alone if they don't control the spotted lanternfly population. Crazy. Some homeowners in Pennsylvania says there's so many spotted lanternflies in their landscape plants and trees that their homes... Cars, decks, grills, and outdoor furniture are getting covered with honeydew, which can grow sooty mold and attract bees and wasps. Wow. Gross. <laughs> yeah. One Pennsylvania entomologist said the populations have grown so much by his home that he can't sit on his back patio anymore because of the constant drops of honeydew from the insects in the trees, and it smells bad. Super gross. <laughs> So as spotted lanternflies spread, it will have an economic impact for farmers and nurseries. They can displace native insects, which can impact plants and animals, and it can have an impact on homeowners, causing more work or expense to try to get rid of them and to clean up the waste. Right. Are they dangerous to humans and pets? Spotted lanternflies have mouth parts that have evolved to suck sap out of plants, so they can't bite They don't have a stinger or contain any venom. That's good, I guess. Cornell University says they're harmless to humans and pets, but they did warn not to let your pets eat spotted lanternflies. Some veterinarians have reported that some pets eating the insects have experienced upset stomachs, drooling, and a loss of appetite. Okay, good to know. Where are spotted lanternflies a problem in the country? To slow the spread of the insects, state agriculture departments have established quarantine zones in Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, Delaware, Virginia, and Maryland. Right now, those states have the worst infestations. Hmm. The quarantine zones are usually designated by the county where the biggest populations are. Okay. If you have a business, you should check online if there's any restrictions in your area. Pennsylvania, for example, has a compliance and enforcement team inspecting trucking companies, and fines can range from three hundred to twenty thousand dollars. Wow, to ching. Yeah. What should you do if you spot one? You want to eliminate all the life cycles. So the first thing to do, especially if you're in any of the states we mentioned, is to look at a picture of the nymphs online. The early stage is black with white spots. The later stage is red with white spots and black lines. The adult has grayish colored wings with black spots on the front part of the outer wings and a checkerboard-like pattern on the back of the wings. The red inner wings can also make the outer wings look slightly pink. Also, check out what the egg masses look like online. Okay. Well, what do you do if you spot one? Call the police? (laughs) Email us? What? (laughs) So you should check online for what your state or county wants you to do with them. Search for your state Department of Agriculture or Cooperative Extension Service. Each state has their own suggestions on what to do. Some states, like Delaware, would like specimens of any life stage you find put into a Ziploc bag and sent to the Department of Agriculture. Hmm. Okie dokie. How do you get rid of them? Penn State University says spotted lanternflies lay their eggs in the fall on any hard, flat surface like tree trunks, the underside of branches, rocks, outdoor furniture, decking, and fence parts. The egg masses are usually an inch to an inch and a half long and a half an inch to three quarters of an inch wide. 
They're usually gray, tan, or brown in color. In spring, they have a cracked-like surface, and it looks like a spot of mud. Hmm. Each egg mass has 30 to 50 eggs, and there may be quite a few egg masses together, depending on the population of the insects by you. Okay. Penn State University recommends smashing the eggs so they can't hatch or scrape them into a bag or container filled with rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer. I wouldn't waste the hand sanitizer. (laughs) So you don't want to just scrape them off a surface because if the eggs aren't crushed, they can hatch. For eggs that are too high on a surface to reach, they suggest spraying the egg masses with a horticultural oil. What's that? It's an oil-based pesticide. It's considered more environmentally friendly than a synthetic pesticide. The oil evaporates, and there isn't a toxic residue. It's considered safe to use around people and pets, but read and follow the label recommendations. Okay. The New Jersey Department of Agriculture says that the spotted lanternfly is a serious invasive pest. They're encouraging residents to destroy any eggs, nymphs, or adults. For any insects you can't reach or crush, use a spray bottle filled with white vinegar. It kills nymphs and adults on contact. Interesting. Yeah. Except everything smells like vinegar. (laughs) So, if you don't like the smell of vinegar, you can use insecticidal soap, which is another pesticide that's safer than synthetic pesticides. It uses potassium salts of fatty acids. But again, follow the application instructions so you're not killing beneficial insects. Right. What are some top-rated insecticidal soap companies? Safer, Bio-Advanced Organics, and Bonide. Okay. Any other tips for getting rid of them? Neem oil is a plant-based oil that's used to control insects. It disrupts the growth of eggs, and it interferes with the nymph and adult hormones, so they don't want to eat or reproduce. So it kills them over time. Okay. It's considered more environmentally friendly than synthetic pesticides with low toxicity to mammals and birds, but follow the application instructions. Mm -hmm. There are also suggestions on using sticky traps and glue traps to kill the insects, but the Autobahn Society says they endanger beneficial insects, small mammals, and birds. So they recommend not using it. And they also say don't use insect killers on your lawn to try to go after spotted lanternflies because they're not effective because they don't live in the lawn. Okay. Who makes some top-rated neem oil products? Safer, bio-advanced organics and bonide have neem oil and spray bottles. And bonide is B-O-N-I-D-E, since I haven't spelled anything today. Wow, that's unheard of. (laughs) How do you prevent them from spreading? Some states like Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, and Virginia are encouraging residents to report or take pictures of any life stage you find and then destroy the insects. You can go online and search if your area is looking for help from residents to monitor and help prevent the spread. Okay. Should you have a checklist for making sure you aren't transporting them back to your home? The USDA has a checklist for homeowners. You can search Spotted Lanternfly Checklist for Residents online. Okay. There's also a Stop and Report a Hitchhiker Bug program. If you post a picture on Facebook or Instagram and use the hashtag HitchhikerBug, they'll take the information. They recommend when you take a picture, have the GPS function turned on on your phone, and that way they know exactly where the picture was taken. Okay. Not at all creepy. (laughs) That's cool. The key thing is, though, if you're moving a vehicle and items from an area where spotted lanternflies are a problem to another area, you should check your vehicle thoroughly and all the items that you're transporting. Right. Like if you have chairs, a tent, any kids' play equipment. Right. Yeah. Anything. Do you have anything else to add? Researchers are studying parasitic wasps from Asia that might help control the spotted lanternfly. What could go wrong? (laughs) Research is also being done on insect-killing fungi that might control spotted lanternflies, but scientists say it could take years to find an effective biological control. The USDA is working with detector dogs to help find spotted lanternflies on cargo in trucks and trains. Hmm. They're training the dogs to use smell to find egg masses. Hmm. And as the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture says, 
If you see spotted lanternfly insects or eggs, kill it, squash it, or smash it. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 17 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, Fix It Home Improvement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week. Do you have